So here is the garage. So in this refrigerator here, we have a laser and it's generating superposed electrical signals. The electrical signals come through this gap and around and they connect to these two mirrors. So these two mirrors move in sympathy and then we measure an interference pattern here. Quantum computing just got revolutionized and no one is even talking about it. Someone has built a quantum computer at home and it is unbelievable. We all know that digital computers change virtually every aspect of our life. No joke, no science fiction movie plot. It actually happened. Now, the latest development from Google that it describes as a state-of-the-art quantum computer chip. The company claims Willow leapfrogs over the supercomputers that we're used to, we used to consider the world's fastest, and it takes five minutes for them to solve a problem that would currently take supercomputers 10 septillion years. This wasn't some rich tech billionaire flexing with unlimited cash, and it definitely wasn't some retired NASA genius hiding in the suburbs. It was just a regular person, admittedly with a lot of degrees and knowledge about quantum computing. While tech giants like Google, IBM and Intel are out here spending billions building quantum computers in cold, high security labs, this dude was doing it right next to his washing machine, using scrap parts from hardware stores and old electronics. And here's the part that broke the internet. The thing actually worked. It wasn't just some fun experiment for views or clicks. It actually functioned, and people online absolutely lost it. Tech forums went crazy. YouTube science nerds were making videos about it. And even actual scientists were scratching their heads, going, how in the world did he do that? People didn't know whether this guy was secretly a genius or if he had just found some kind of weird glitch in the universe. And trust me, quantum computers are not just regular computers that run faster. They're not about making your Wi-Fi quicker or helping you get more kills in Fortnite. Quantum computers are basically cheat codes for the universe. We're talking about breaking unbreakable codes, discovering new medicines, cracking insane math problems, even leveling up AI. It's the kind of tech that could literally change the world. And this guy just casually made one like it was a school project. But before we get into how they actually pulled it off, let's break down what a quantum computer even is. Most people don't even know how their phones work, and I don't blame them. A regular computer uses something called bits, right? Bits are basically zeros and ones. Yep, that's it. Literally everything you see online is just a giant pattern of ones and zeros making your life easier. Every video you stream, including this one, every photo you take, every game you play, it's all just a complicated string of ones and zeros being sorted and processed by microchips. But quantum computers? They don't play by those rules. They work with something entirely different. Instead of bits, these bad boys use something called qubits. Already sounds cooler, right? But here's where it gets a little weird. A qubit can be a one, a zero, or both at the same time. I told you it was about to get weirder. Not following? Look at it this way. Imagine flipping a coin and having it land on heads and tails at once. That's basically how superposition works. It's not just sitting in one state, it's actually in multiple states at the same time until you measure it. And then we have something called entanglement. It's basically when two qubits are entangled. What does it do? Well, changing one qubit instantly changes the other, even if they're miles apart. You could mess with one in your room and the other could be floating on the other side of the planet. And get this, they'd still react at the same time. That's crazy. Even Einstein thought this concept was super spooky. He called it spooky action at a distance. So what does that mean for computing? Well, put superposition and entanglement together and you get a machine 
that can solve ridiculously hard problems super fast. Stuff that would take your laptop a million years to solve, a quantum computer could solve in seconds. Problems like breaking encryption codes, simulating molecules for drug discovery, designing advanced materials, or optimizing insanely complex logistic systems. But here's the catch. Building one of these things is almost impossible with today's technology. Unless you have a billion dollar lab, of course. But why can't you build one at home? Well, for starters, they're super sensitive, like a mood swing on Monday morning. Heat messes them up, noise messes them up, even slight vibrations can throw off the whole calculation. Someone sneezing across the street could probably ruin the entire experiment. That's why companies like Google, IBM, and Regetti build them in labs cooled to almost absolute zero, with entire teams of physicists and engineers watching every tiny move the machine makes. Cooling is essential because many quantum computers rely on superconducting circuits, or in other words, materials that carry electric current without resistance when cooled to extremely low temperatures. We're talking millikelvin temperatures here, just a fraction of a degree above absolute zero. I don't mean to exaggerate, but that's actually colder than outer space. So, yeah, the whole thing really makes you wonder how in the world did this person build one in their basement? Anyway, moving along. Quantum computers don't just stop at superconductors. There are other approaches too. Ion trap quantum computers, for example, use charged atoms suspended in electromagnetic fields, manipulated with lasers. Honestly, this thing is beyond my pay grade. It's like voodoo magic, but I'll try to make it simple. Imagine tiny balls and think of them as atoms. You essentially trap them in place using invisible walls made of magnets and electricity. Those invisible walls keep them floating in the air so they don't touch anything. Then, here's the fun part. You use lasers like tiny magic wands to poke the atoms. When you poke them with lasers, they can talk to each other and help solve problems. That's basically how ion trap quantum computers work. Tiny floating balls, lasers, and teamwork. Cool, right? And then there is the whole thing about photonic quantum computing, where information is carried by particles of light. So clearly, this quantum stuff is super confusing. Despite all of this progress, quantum computing is still in its early stages. What's out there right now is called Noisy Intermediate Scale Quantum, or NISQ, devices. Basically, they can run small experiments, but they're noisy, meaning errors happen frequently and they can't yet outperform classical computers for most everyday tasks. Okay, so they're not really quantum computers, right? And before you start fuming, no. This video isn't about a NISQ device. Our person really did build a quantum computer in their basement. But yeah, the dream is still to reach what's called quantum supremacy, where a quantum computer solves a problem no traditional computer could come close to solving in a reasonable amount of time, or even think about for that matter. Google famously claimed to have reached this milestone in 2019, with a specific, specialized problem, but practical. Everyday applications are still out of reach, even if by a hair. Now let's connect this to something we can all relate to. Encryption. You know, the stuff that keeps all your banking apps, accounts and wallets safe. Most of the internet's security is locked with special codes called encryption. These codes are super hard to break because they use really big numbers that are tough for normal computers to solve. But a quantum computer could solve those codes super fast using something called Shor's algorithm. That's why tech companies and governments are working hard to build new, stronger codes. 
ones that even quantum computers won't be able to break. I mean, if you can pretty much hack the internet using a quantum computer, imagine the damage it could do in the wrong hands. And it also kind of makes sense now why all these huge companies and corporations are so eager to build one. But at the same time, if they don't build stronger codes, one powerful quantum computer could basically unlock tons of private stuff online. It's not just about breaking codes. Quantum computers could change entire industries. In medicine, they could help scientists design new drugs by figuring out how tiny molecules work, something today's computers struggle with. For delivery companies, quantum computers could find the fastest routes for trucks and planes, saving time, fuel, and money. And what about artificial intelligence? Well, quantum computers could make AI way smarter and faster than it is right now. They could help machines learn better, find patterns quicker, and solve problems we haven't even thought of yet. But before we get carried away, there's still a big problem. Any guesses? No? Errors. Quantum computers are tricky. The qubits or the tiny things doing all the magic are super sensitive. Even a little bit of heat, noise, or random energy from the environment can mess them up. Imagine trying to balance a pencil on its tip while someone keeps poking the table. That's what it's like trying to keep qubits stable. It also makes you wonder, if these computers are so sensitive, how would you even manage building one in your basement? To figure that out, let's talk about how you can keep qubits stable. Well, to fix that, scientists are working on something called quantum error correction. It's like giving the computer extra helpers to clean up mistakes. But here's the catch. You might need thousands of regular qubits just to make one reliable, strong qubit. Yeah, not easy. Quantum computing just keeps getting weirder and weirder. I mean, you need thousands of qubits to make one stable qubit now? Yeah, I don't think I could ever build one in my basement. But hold up. Why is everyone still so excited if we can't even use these machines for normal stuff yet? Because once we crack the code, it's going to change everything. It's kind of like the early days of flying or sending rockets to space. At first, people crashed a lot. But then, we got aeroplanes space shuttles, satellites, well, you get the idea. And here's something cool. You don't have to be a scientist to get involved. Right now, you can actually hop online and start playing around with real quantum computers through platforms like IBM Quantum. They've made it free for anyone to learn and test simple programs. There are special coding languages too, like Chiskit or Google Circ, that help people experiment with quantum ideas from home. We're basically living in the garage stage of quantum computing. You know, the messy, awkward beginning that could soon lead to the next tech revolution. And now since you know what qubits, superposition, and entanglement are all about, welcome to the future. Now for the big question. Quantum computers are the future. But what's in it for us? I mean, is a computer running on thousands of qubits going to do something for us? More than you can even imagine. Let's double down on some of the potential impacts. For starters, I'm not just talking about faster laptops or cooler video games here. Quantum computers could completely change how we solve the hardest problems on Earth. Number one, medicine. Right now, making new drugs is basically trial and error. Scientists test thousands of combinations, just hoping one works. It's like Russian roulette at this point, minus the bullets. But with quantum computers, they could model how molecules behave, down to the tiniest details. That means faster cures, better treatments, and maybe even cures for diseases we've been fighting for centuries. Imagine if we had that stuff around, during COVID-19. Now let's talk about money. 
Banks use complicated systems to keep your information safe. Stuff like encryption, what we discussed earlier, remember? But like I said before, quantum computers could break those systems in seconds. That's why tech companies and governments are already working on new, quantum-safe ways to protect data. It's like building a better lock before the burglars figure out how to open the old one. But I'm not done quite yet. Quantum computers could also help with traffic problems, shipping routes, or airline schedules. Imagine saving millions of dollars and hours just by finding better routes. Quantum computers could make that happen. And then there's climate change. Yep, quantum computers could help model complex climate systems, predict extreme weather better, and maybe even help design better materials for clean energy. All of this is still in progress right now, and honestly speaking, we don't have that perfect quantum computer yet, but we're getting closer, and when it happens, the world's going to look very different. So, yeah, it's not just nerdy science stuff, it's medicine, money, security, travel, the planet. Or in other words, basically all of it. Quantum computers could be one of the biggest game changers we've ever seen. And we're lucky we get to watch it happen in real time. Now for the wild part of this story, the person who actually built a quantum computer in their own basement. Now, was this a giant machine like the ones at Google, not even close. Those things need massive labs and extreme cold, like colder than deep space cold. But what this person pulled off was still insane. Nevertheless, the man behind the whole project is James Tagg, an inventor and a serial inventor who has made a lot of advances in engineering. And now he seems to be on the way to revolutionizing quantum technology. He is a very, very smart person, and it shows from his work. Now for the wild part. Turns out, his main interest is to build digital beings and quantum computers inspired by the operation of the human brain. Yeah, like replicating humans, but in quantum computers. Sounds like a dystopian robot overlord's world waiting to happen. I'm 60% sure James Tag has no such intentions. Make it 55. It sure is an ambitious aim, and this home-built quantum computer is a step in the direction. Maybe he will be the one to create the first true artificial intelligence that is also conscious. Even if James's dream doesn't come to fruition, this feat of quantum marvel is enough to solidify his place as a genius in my books. I mean, the project must have had some insane challenges, no doubt. But despite everything, it worked. Maybe not perfectly, but just enough to prove that you don't need a billion-dollar lab or Google employment to start exploring quantum tech. It's early, it's messy, but it's an idea of where things are headed and how the world is going to transform. Remember what Steve Jobs said, right? It's the crazy ones that manage to do something insane. And honestly, what's cooler than that? Anyway, that's it from my side, folks. So, what do you think? Will we see an actual quantum computer this decade? Or will this mystery builder surprise the world again in the future and be the first to make one? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos in the future. Thanks for watching and see you next time.